Okay, so this is going to be a video on a tool that I use all the time called FFmpeg, and it's a free product that you can download, and you can actually use it on probably Mac. Actually, I've never done it on Mac. I know I've done it on Linux, and I've done it on Windows. It says it's cross-platform, so maybe it includes Mac. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me at this point. But what I want to talk about is the awesomeness that is FFmpeg. So being that it's open source, which is pretty rad because, and you can get, you can download pre-compiled versions. So it's not like you have to figure out how to compile it yourself. And it's a really powerful tool. It's all command line. As you can see on the left side of my screen right here, I'll show you how to use some of these things, the uh, command line options. So what I use it for is a couple of things. One, if I've got a video that seems to be um, not really corrupted, but say a product like Adobe Premiere doesn't know what to do with it. So when I drag in it, it just gives me a red X, like you're not going to drag this file in here, boy. This isn't a video file. This is a text file. Or something stupid like that. Not really. But it doesn't accept the video format. So what I'll do is I'll run it through FFmpeg. I'll copy the uh, the video codec and I'll copy the audio codec. And so it pretty much just runs it through and re-outputs it to the uh, same file type. And all of a sudden, W Premiere goes, oh, I know what to do with that. Yeah, it's that stupid. Um, another scenario that I use it is um, there are cases where you'll be using something like Bandicam. And if Bandicam terminates abruptly... <coughs> Sorry, if Bandicam terminates abruptly and you've got an issue with maybe a keyframe at the end of it or something like that, and it's, it basically can't import the file because it, it can't it can't figure out there's like frames lost at the end because it wasn't able to actually close out the video file. Using FFmpeg, it's a little more resilient to that. You can literally just have it run through all of the existing frames, and they'll all work right until it gets near the end where it kind of crashed, and it'll just go, oh, this frame's weird, and it'll close out the file for you. But at least it's usable at that point. Another scenario is um, when I want to upload something to Instagram that I've just uploaded to YouTube, I don't want to have like the same quality personally because Instagram's a little square and it's like a 1080 by 1080 square and it's so small people's phones. Instagram's literally for phones. The Instagram I have on my tablet, doesn't it doesn't even work. It's really the iPhone version ex expanded at two times. So the reality is that Instagram's a phone um, application and I don't think the video quality needs to be exceptional. You don't need to be running 4K 60 frames on Instagram. So what I do is, I also it's square, right? Most of your your frames your framing is square or portrait, which is nothing like YouTube. So um, YouTube's right; it's it's landscape; it's a horizontal frame. So what I want to do is I want to make that quick to be able to upload it to Instagram for one and um, and make it fast to upload that. So what I do is I use FFmpeg to basically take the original video that I uploaded to YouTube. It's going to rip through it and make a square out of it. So um, one thing I haven't done yet is I'd like to be able to use FFmpeg to maybe, you know, I could type in a time frame. It'll grab the last 59 seconds starting at that time and just grab that 59 seconds because that's really all you can upload to Instagram, at least um, posting as a, a post, not a story or an IGTV. If you're just posting as a post, you can't do more than a minute. So you want to do like 59 seconds. Um, so one of these days I'll write a script for that, and I'm pretty sure it's possible. You just basically say the start frame, grab it for 60, uh, 59 seconds, and then that's it. But anyhow, that's not what I have today. I, I have to export a 59-second video out of Premiere, and then I, I crop it down using this. So let me show you that now that I've kind of just rambled a bunch, and I've done nothing on the screen. So, All right, so FFmpeg. So what I've done is I'm running the current version. I store everything under FFmpeg here. Hold on a second. I store everything over FFmpeg on my C drive, and you can see that's here. I got a couple of the old ones. That, that doesn't come with the download. You can see them. <clears throat> um, these are actually just because I had previous versions. I wanted to keep it just in case it was the new one was funky. But I literally just went to download. I didn't download the source code. I downloaded the Windows because I'm on Windows. And then I downloaded the builds by Zerano. And I downloaded the 421 stable, 64-bit static, and I downloaded that build. So that's literally what I'm running. That's right here. And what I did is I took that zip file and I extracted FFmpeg on my C drive. So um, the actual FFmpeg sits under the bin folder. So what I've done, though, is I've got all my videos here. So these are like the videos I work with. And what I've done is I created a batch file. Let me uh, type it out to the screen here, FFm. And basically what that does is change your path statement. So if you don't know what a path statement is, when you type in commands in a command prompt like this and you type a command that's not in the present directory you're in, like this directory right here, if I type in asdf.exe and it doesn't exist in this folder and it doesn't exist in any of the path statements so if you type in set uh i can type in set but it shows all my pathing statements i don't know if there's anything in there i want to hide 
Um, if it's not in your path, your current path statement, then it'll tell you that it's not recognized. So what I want to do first is this, this ffm.bat will literally set the path and it also sets the path as you can see to my ffmpeg and my ffmpeg bin and my videos. So I can literally use any of the ffmpeg bin files, so ffmpeg.exe, plus I can use any of my batch files I've written because they all sit under videos. So I can be in any folder on my computer and I can type in vid, I can type in vid fix type in the a file name like that, and it'll actually run it, even if I'm not sitting on a video. So that's the first thing you do with FFM. So it gets my path statement right. And then what I do is I got a couple different, these these um, batch files I use. I use them pretty regularly, actually. Well, the vid fix I don't use very often because I don't use Bandicam anymore, and I don't have issues with OBS corrupting my data, but Bandicam, oh my gosh, that thing crashed. If your computer crashed or anything happened, it happened more than it should, reality. I don't know why, to be honest with you, because it's been years since I used it, but it was a huge pain. So basically, let me type that out. So this this fix vid one, literally, like I was saying, it literally just copies the codec, codec, audio and video codecs, and then just re-outputs the file. But it's literally the same file. So why it works, I don't know, but it does. It goes through every single frame. It's probably because it must be re-encoding if you do copy. I, I don't know the answer to that one, but it fixes the file. You can use the Bandicam file after it runs through that. The other one that I use a lot is stripping the audio out of a video. And I probably shouldn't admit this, but if you had a video that had some cool music in the background, but you didn't really want the video itself, you just wanted the music, you could literally rip out the rip out the audio as an MP3 using this. And I use this all the time. And so basically, a couple options. I don't remember what they all are. I just I can read it real quick. I'd like the the rate is a, is forty four thousand hertz. Uh, the bit rate's three hundred twenty kilobits. Uh, I don't know what AC2 or VN means, but the, the file type is MP3, and so it takes your input file and then it dumps it as an MP3, and it actually works really well. So, as an example, let's see. I've got this, I've got this video here. I can play it right now. So I'm going to play this video right here. It's fast, and basically it's just this. It's just my son being a goof on my uh, my computer. He's pretending like he's taking over. So, so basically, I'm going to take that. And instead of making it a video like it is right now, we're going to strip out the audio and just pull out an MP3 file that'll play as an MP3. So I'll say fix MP, no, excuse me, not fix, it's vid. I used to call them fix MP3. And let's see, this is 2019, 16, or tw uh, yeah, 12, 16. Run that. And now I should have an MP3 file right here. And it's literally just the audio. I have officially taken over the channel. It is now. See? So stripped out audio from a video file that's an excellent thing um if you like again if you have something you just want to pull the music or the audio out of it and then you can drag it into premiere and do whatever you want with it that's pretty sick um, another one i like to do is this vid mp4 and basically what this will do is it'll take it'll take any video basically that ffmpeg can understand which is a tremendous amount of videos it's going to re-encode it in um to uh, x264 and then it's going to run a slow preset on it so it's a little bit slower in its encoding i'm looking for a variable bit rate of 10,000 and a max bit rate of 25,000 and then the codec is aac and it dumps it out as an mp4 file and this works really well so as an example i've got a movie file here right so apple movie i'm going to say vid mp4 and i'm going to just type in this 1216 i'm going to export it here it's actually going to go pretty fast because it's a short little video right and you can see that the codec H264. H oh, I said X, didn't I? That's because I didn't remember. Okay, so uh, it's also a 60 frames per second video. Um, what is interesting is, and this is something that I had re just recently learned. So my max is that. My Okay, so I did, it did take my option. Okay, never mind. So basically the video quality is going to be pretty good it has to re-encode it that's that's true but the reality is is that it's going to be almost as good i mean you can see there's a size difference right i lost seven um seven megs there right so but i'm pretty sure the video quality is i mean if it's if it's different it's very hard to notice so i don't really have an issue with it personally some of you guys doing some ultra high def type stuff might say oh i can see green but I, to me it looks just the same like i don't have an issue with that at all so that basically takes any file puts it in mp4 and that means that i can upload it to youtube without any issues and that's generally what I do that for. I just rip it through. Plus, it reduces the size a little bit. And I have a slow internet connection, so this is actually beneficial for me. 
obviously seven megs or whatever here is no big deal but if i was doing something like a 10 say i had a really large file like this one's pretty large here 2.6 gigs so if i were to try to upload that one it would take a while but if i ran it through this convert converter um this this uh, ffmpeg filter that i just ran this other one through it would probably reduce it by 500 megs be my guess somewhere around there right i mean if you followed the same numbers this would probably be 1.8 gigs instead of 2.6 okay so but i also want to show you the last one that i use all the time uh I want to make sure I typed this one out. I don't remember if I did. I'm going to type that MP4 one so you can see what command I used for that. I did show you that. So then I'm also going to type out this MP4 IG square. And this one basically takes very similar commands. I'm going to drop that bit rate a little bit. You can see I'm only doing 7.5 and, and 10.0. And I'm doing a preset of fast, so it's a little bit faster. And then I also do a... a uh, a video filter and I'm cropping it square. And so basically I'm saying crop equals in height for the for the uh, width and in height for the height. So if the video is 1920 by 1080, it literally is going to make it 1080 by 1080. And I didn't specify the start coordinates X and Y on the frame. Like you can literally specify X and Y on the frame. It'll say start here and it'll crop a box out of there. But since I didn't specify those, it literally starts right in the center. So it's going to basically wipe out the two sides of the video. And I can demonstrate that right now. So we're going to do vid IG square. I'm going to do that same video again. Oh, yeah, it's because it's already there. I'm going to overwrite it. And it's going to rip through those frames, but it's going to make it square. And you can see it's it's actually faster. So the last one, let's see how fast it went through. If I can find that. Wish I showed me, like, how fast did you rip this? I swear that it was there somewhere. Yeah, 16 seconds right there, right? And so this one in the square... No, that's the video size. Oh, well, whatever. I, don't, it's, I know it's faster to go through with the fast mode. You can see it's, it's smaller, right, because it's actually missing some content. If I run this fixed vid, you can see that it's literally the center of that video, and it chopped off this side, this side right here. Like, it used to go here when it was a widescreen, and you probably used to go all the way to here when it was a widescreen. So it literally just cut out the center. It's perfect for upgro uh, uploading to Instagram as a square video. Plus, it reduces the size significantly. If I have an output from Premiere that's more uh, that's higher quality than these movie files, and it's really a, just a really high quality export out of Premiere, this will reduce it significantly. It'll cut it down probably at, by half or thirds. And so um, that's what I use FFmpeg for. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's probably kind of a little wordy. Um, if you have any questions about the batch file stuff, if you've never used a command line, it might be a little confusing. But just keep in mind that you should probably keep your FFmpeg in here. Just make a C colon FFmpeg, extract that zip file so it looks just like this, minus these two olds. And then if you have a videos folder where you keep your videos, you can just drop your videos in here. And that way you, your FFmpeg stuff doesn't get confusing with um, <clears throat> uh, the FFmpeg like binaries. Don't conf it, 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 get confusing with your video files. So that's why I separate them like that. Plus then I can use it anywhere on the whole drive. It doesn't have to be just in my videos. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video and I can put I'll put in these I'll put these in the uh, video description so you can just copy paste them and uh, thanks for watching